You're listening to the Finding Career Zen podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and I'm joined today by Ricky Baez, who I invited on to talk about a very specific subject because Ricky is he's an HR guy. And so this this required an HR guy's opinion today. Ricky, how are you? Doing good, my friend. How about you? I'm doing I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing awesome. wonderful. I, w- I want to cut right to the chase because this okay. is something that we have talked about in the past, Ricky. And I don't know that we sit on the same side of the table with it. And that is cover letters, Mm. all about cover letters. So I saw a post on LinkedIn this morning where a recruiter, a corporate recruiter said essentially that they believe that cover letters are antiquated and unnecessary. What say you to that? Uh, I agree. (laughs) I agree with the cover letter being unnecessary these days. Um, so yeah, I, I I now I didn't start off that way. At the beginning of my career, I thought they were necessary. But as I continue to do recruiting jobs, I continue to interview more and more, and I start to figure out how a recruiter's time is taken up in a day. Cover letters are a waste of time, in my opinion. All right. I thought that was going to be your opinion. And I'm going to convince you on why that's I'm going to change your opinion during Ooh. during this this podcast. Okay. And I'm going to look at the clock. We're a minute 30 in. Got it. By the time that we get to 15 minutes, you will be on my side of the table. Are you willing to accept Whoa. that uh, that challenge? Why do I feel like I'm an America's Got Talent? This looks like a magic trick about to happen. Let's go. All right. Yeah. Okay. So the so these posts get lots of attention on LinkedIn. So this is my you know, old man get off my lawn statement that, that I'll start with, where it's it's all about doing less, right? Hey, you don't need to do that. It's an unnecessary step. Job searching is stressful enough. That was sort of the sentiment of this post. And the uh, the recruiter said, you know, applying is enough, right? The fact that you took the time to apply, that shows enough effort. And I couldn't disagree more with that. Mm. Applying to a job in, in our modern you know, era means clicking a button on a, a job board. That's it. It it you couldn't put forth less effort than clicking True. a button. So let's just start with with effort because I believe uh, success in life and business comes with effort as usually the di- differentiator between you know, one person and another. Right? Who's going to be more successful? Well, all things being equal, the one that puts forth more effort. So let's just start with that. Do you agree? Okay. Uh, do you do you think that applying for a job is something that requires effort today? Absolutely, absolutely, one hundred percent. You do. I so do. clicking that button that 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 should be considered effort. And um, you well, should clicking that button that. to me is not considered effort. It's I mean, not click, considered effort. It's okay. not. No, okay. but 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 it takes effort to apply for a job and be noticed today. Yes. Okay, so That's well, well wait a minute. That sounds contradictory to me. So if you're you're going through, let's say um you know you're you're looking for a sales job and you've you've gone to LinkedIn or Indeed or Career Builder, whatever job board you're on, and you've typed in sales openings and you get a list of them. Now to apply, all you have to do is click click a button. So individually applying for that job, you do think that requires effort or or does not? So if you see it that way, no, I, I, I'm well, that's how I'm saying it. Yeah, that's <laughs> because a- because where, where where I was shooting from is I don't just do the shotgun approach, like, you know, exactly how you say you just start applying to all these jobs. I like to mold the job. I, well, first of all, I like to pick a job that I'm definitely interested in, not just the money piece of it, but I kind of want to mold my resume to what they're looking for without lying. Okay. So that's the effort that I'm talking about that that it takes to. Well, to... we're not we're not filling in blanks here. You got to stick just with with the data okay. at hand, which yeah. is yes or no. You answers, applied for the job, which only requires clicking a button. Is that effort? Yes or no? It is not effort. Okay, no. so that's not it's effort. Not effort. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. Now we know because that doesn't require effort that it gives candidates the ability to apply to a lot of jobs in a very short time frame. And you, you agree with that too, right? I do. Yeah. Okay. So what that means is when a recruiter posts a job, whether it's a corporate recruiter, a third party recruiter for a staffing company, they get inundated with resumes and applications because it's become so easy. It's not like the old days, right? The you know, days past pre-job board, you had to 
you know, email a resume, fax a resume, hand deliver a resume. Now, I would argue all those things take significantly more effort. Mm -hmm. And therefore, any job opening received significantly fewer resumes. So because it's so easy, job um, postings get a lot of applications, a lot. And, and right. the, the bigger the brand, the more recognizable the name, the more applications they get. And so if you're a job seeker, you have to know that. You need to know that. And so the point that this recruiter was making was, hey, listen, that's enough effort. You hit the button, you applied, that shows me you're interested. You don't need to take the other a step to, to produce a cover letter. So here's, huh. here's where I disagree. Okay. Um, and, I, and I'm going to start now convincing you to come, come on my side with this. Your goal as a candidate, if you're applying for a job and you've already, you, you sort of let, let into this already, you said I, you're going to customize your resume. Why would you do that for, for a specific opening? I would want to put myself in the best position possible for my resume to be selected for review. Okay. You want, is that, is, is it fair to say you want to stand out from the crowd? Absolutely. And, and I didn't, I feel like this is, we're in court right now. This is a different, <laughs> this is a different style than our, our typical podcast, but we're, well, we're going to, we're going to stick to telling it. me yes or no questions. All right. It, Deposition, let's go. <laughs> I'm on the clock. I have, I have, right. I have eight and a half minutes left to, to right. convince you. Um, so you as a job seeker want to stand out. And I couldn't agree more with that. That is the goal. If you are on the market, you see a job you want, you need to figure out how to separate yourself from the pack. Well, we've already acknowledged that there's going to probably be a lot of applicants. Um, recruiters have to look through all of those and decide who they're going to pull out from the pile. And you said you wanted to customize your resume for that role. It's with that thought in mind, right? You want to be noticed. You want to stand out, correct? Correct. Correct. I do. Okay. Can you think of anything else that would help you stand out? So since we're asking those specific yes or no questions in the application process, because where I plan to stand out is in the interview. Well, you have to get that first. Got it. Right? Okay. Step one okay. is to stand out from the pile of applicants. It, how could you potentially do that, do you think? Well, I mean, I see where you're leading me to. But how I I'm tell not leading you at all. The, uh, I, you know, judge, objection, I'm not leading, I'm not leading at all. I'm just <laughs> leading asking. the witness. You answer as you see fit. Okay, so look, um, I, I, how I like to stand out is I don't, I don't focus too much on the resume as I normally would in the entire process. How I stand out is I submit an application, I send it a resume, and I do some really good research to find that specific recru re recruiter on LinkedIn and connect with them directly. That's huh. how I plan on standing out. Okay, I like this approach. So you're going to dare we say, put in more effort than the other? Absolutely. Others? Yeah. Okay. Man. So you've found this, this recruiter, right? And you've, you've, who's hiring for the role and you're going to contact them, right? How are you going to contact them? I send them an email on, on LinkedIn. I got the premium account. I got my in-mail credit and I, I word my message really specifically. I send them an email to say, hey, hello, I see you work for this organization. I apply for this role. Here is the rec number. Um, I, I apply. My resume is on there. I would love a few minutes of your time so I can learn more about this role. Now, that's going to do two things. If that's the correct recruiter, maybe he, he or she will talk to me. But if it's not, he or she will direct me to the right person. Either way, I'm getting the right people. Um, so you, you send that message through LinkedIn. What if you find an email address for that person? Would you, would you contact them that way? Absolutely. I will. Okay. Yep. And, and boy, it sure does sound a whole lot like you're sending them a cover letter. Doesn't it, Ricky? Oh, Pete. Yes, it does. It does. But I'm, I'm thinking about the cover letter, not from the candidate's perspective. I'm thinking about the cover letter from a recruiter's perspective. So you're thinking it from the candidate's perspective. So well, let's let's look at it from both, right? Okay. We have plenty of time. We still have five and a half minutes. We're getting there. <laughs> God, not for us. So let's look at you as a recruiter. You okay. have uh, you you need to hire for what one opening, and you've posted a job ad, and you have 200 applicants, and I think that's a fair number to that's use. Really don't you? Just as an average, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Not very common. 
And you have to decide which ones you're going to pick out of the pile. What's going to cause you to notice one candidate over the others? So a normal recruiter, yes, it's if you see resumes, resumes, and a cover letter, that's going to visually stand out. But I know what cover letters do. What a cover letter is, it personalizes your resume. That's all it is. Your resume has all the ingredients, right? That's that's listed on the side of a of a mac and cheese box. And the cover letter is the beautiful mac and cheese picture that you see at the supermarket. It personalizes it. It makes it more marketable. The reason from a from a, a recruiter perspective that I think is a waste of time, exactly how you said, if I have one position, I got 200 applications and I have a business partner that told me about this empty position three months too late. So now I have no time. I have an average of nine seconds for a resume, the actual skill set to really stand out. So I'm going to be honest, if I see a resume, I skip it because I don't want to be wowed by how you articulated your skill set. I want to be wowed by your skill set. And that's what I'm going to look at on, uh, on your resume, because at the end of the day, that's what matters. And if you meet the minimum qualifications, I'll invite you in to see if the personality and the chemistry matches. That's so you have to stand out, right? So you're yep. the recruiter. Let's, mm -hmm. let's give the scenario. And I'm the applicant. And you, you've posted a job. You have your 200 resumes. And you're, you're you know, we all know what this feels like. You're like, oh, boy, I got to mm -hmm. screen go. through resumes. Your eyes glaze over. And you see one that, um, that that has a cover letter, and it says, you know, "Dear recruiter, I believe I'm the right person for the job, and here's why." And it and and it and it has your company name, and it has you know the specific job reference, right? Which you can't do in a resume as, as effectively. Mm -hmm. And they send you a LinkedIn message, and they've sent you. Let's say oh, now you're adding other things. Go ahead. Well, I have to deliver this cover letter to okay. you, right? And I am I am adding other things because what I always recommend to a job seeker is go above and beyond. Correct. Do the things that others are probably not going to do. You your goal is to differentiate yourself. And I also for that reason recommend using a third party recruiter wherever you can mm -hmm. because our resumes don't go in the pile. When when you're a professional recruiter, you deliver, you know, our my company, Four Corner Resources, because you've worked with us long enough, you you know that our goal is to deliver a single resume for any one job right. opening. Because we do all this the screening on the front end and we believe that saves our client time and and that's our value that we deliver to them. And when we send that resume, never, ever do we just send it without an explanation as to why we're sending that candidate. So while we're not writing in the form of a cover okay. letter, it's effectively the same thing. We're describing why this candidate is a good fit for the role. And that gives a summary to the hiring manager or the, the HR recruiter, whoever it might be, to set the stage for why this candidate is worthy of interviewing. Um, don't you want that when you're the recruiter? And don't you want someone giving um, more effort making your job easy, summarizing why they're a good fit. <laughs> I mean, I do. I do, Pete. And 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 that would definitely be helpful um, in standing out. It would. But, again, the way I'm looking at it is, is in the time that a recruiter has. So following that, that same example, I got that pile, and I see that, that one cover letter. And I start reading that cover letter because it has a company name and is well-written. And if that doesn't impress me, next, I wasn't impressed by not even looking at the resume. Okay, but why would that not impress you? Well, I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I want to be able to see the best information in the nine seconds on average that I'm going to have first. And I don't want to make a decision in the book cover, right? It's because that's essentially what I'm doing. Well, that's what a resume is. We know that. I mean, yeah. I, 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 maybe, maybe we disagree on that too. I, I think the resume is a cover to a book and, and the, the book, the, the, the text in the book is the individual and that's, you're never going to get a good comparison, but, yeah. but you have to be attracted to the cover of the book in order to ever read it. Right. Mm -hmm. Or you, you have to have some reason to pick one book over another. And to me, that's what a cover letter does as far as giving a candidate an advantage I know if I know nothing else, and I really don't know anything else when I'm looking through hundreds of applications, 
I see that this candidate put forth more effort. So it's now if they're not qualified, it's not going to matter. Right. Yeah. We're, we're talking about standing out from the crowd only and setting yourself up uh, for success and giving yourself the best chance for that. That's to me what the cover letter is. So I would recommend sending it in in um, in snail mail too. I'd send it through the postal service uh, because that will be another differentiator. Now I also recommend that candidates call um, directly and try to get the recruiter yeah. live. So all of these things are not about making an unqualified candidate qualified. You can't do that. They're standing out. That's They're about standing out. Yeah, yeah so, I agree. So I don't have you convinced yet, it sounds like? I mean, no, I'm there. I'm there. It's because I think you're looking at it from the standing out perspective. I'm looking at it from the recruiter perspective who has very limited time to really assess whether you pick this candidate or not. That's how I was looking at it. So but one of the right. things, so let me, so as a, as a recruiter, it, and maybe this is a little bit different with third-party recruiters, um, but one of the things that that's important to recruiters is to make sure that candidates genuinely interested and committed in the in the yeah. in the for the job, and this is a way to show that. And trust me, we r- recruiters and in, in, you, you know this well. It's very difficult for us to 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 you know to know who is really going to be reliable, True. who's not. I mean, it's a feeling out process. But if someone takes a time to do what others haven't done, boy, that, that gives them, you know, a, a big leg up. Um, and it gives me confidence that, that, okay, they're serious. If I know nothing else, I know they're serious. Um, here's the other thing. And it this is what too. came out of this. Huh? It could hurt too. Now, how it so? Could. Because I, um, I remember when I was working at the County years ago and I was recruiting for a position, I guess somebody was given advice that you really want to stand out with your resume and cover letter. The cover letter was in a bright fuchsia paper dousing perfume, stunk up the whole office, went right into the, into the shredder. Okay. And we had to take the shredder outside because okay. it stunk up the whole office still. <laughs> well, okay. So Trust me, we, she stood out. <laughs> so please go on zengig.com. We have, we offer lots of advice and, and yes. templates and uh, guidance on, on cover letters. Uh, and none of that involves using <laughs> scented paper. Scented but, uh, paper, fuchsia bright. This is so no. weird. <laughs> um, here's the other interesting thing that I read through on this LinkedIn post today. So of course... It gets lots of attention, right? This is a, um, you know, it's a controversial thing, I guess, if we want to use that or not to be dramatic in the world of recruiting, right? To cover letter or not to cover letter. If that's the um, controversy, we're in a good world, brother. <laughs> yeah, well, we should be so lucky, right? Yeah. But but here's the thing. there's There were 2,000 comments when I saw the post this morning, wow. and it looked to be split down the middle. And half had your opinion, half have mine. So if you're a candidate and here's, you know, I didn't make my 15 minute window, I'll get it within 20, but this is <laughs> what's it. going to convince you fully. It, take my word for it. I think you will that half okay. about half said, yes, I want to see cover letters. The other half I said, no, I can I see that. No. Don't you want to, isn't it worth the chance then? Isn't it worth if, if half are like me who say, this is going to help you stand out. Isn't it worth it? Because you don't know, which half that's going to be when you're sending in your application. If it's a job you're genuinely interested in. So as a candidate, isn't it worth taking that step? So from a candidate's perspective, absolutely. It's worth it. It's worth it because you lose nothing in doing it and you lose all kinds of opportunities if you don't, right? Because it's a 50, 50 chance. No, I get it. Your it's honor. 50. I think I rest my case. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You was lead. I'm the, I'll convince you. You know, we're recording the this, right? Yeah, we are. We are. But again, we, again, I did say that my, my position has always been from the recruiter side, not from the candidate side. So from the candidate side, yes, you would stand out. You really would stand out. But if those 2000 comments are anything, if it, if it's split down the middle, 50, 50, then yeah, I definitely agree, Pete. Go ahead and do it because you are better off doing it than not to to stand out. Just don't stand out too much for the wrong reasons. But yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I say I'm 50 percent there. OK, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. But as a candidate, if if yeah, I um, yeah, that, and that's really who we're here uh, trying to help with with this advice is, you know, 
and, and I'll close with this, Ricky. I, it, it, I never like seeing advice when it is slanted towards recommending so that, that the candidate does less because I'm fully, fully on the other side of, of, of the fence with that, where I recommend the candidates do more, do the most you can do to set yourself up for success, provided that's a job you, you genuinely want to pursue. So I do recommend writing a letter along with it. Um, I recommend putting forth effort and trying to find who the hiring manager is or the recruiter who's responsible for the job. Not only should you contact them through LinkedIn, um, perhaps you should consider sending them mail, you know, through through the through the postal you know service. All right. I mean, it 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 works. It catches people's attention it and does. pick up the phone and call them. Because that is, you know, you have to find a way to stand out. And trust me, if you're, you know, unaware of this, we, I mean, we all see the complaints that recruit, you know, people send their resumes to a black hole, they never hear back. Well, it's because so many happen. You said nine seconds, you know, the time a, on average. a recruiter looks at a resume. So you know, what's going to make you, your resume be the one that gets pulled out of the pile? That's up to you. Are you willing to do what others aren't? You know, Jerry Rice said it best. I won't try to, um, you know, to to best him, but um, that's that's why he was successful, right? He said he'd do what others weren't willing to do. So same thing with a job search. Put forth your best effort. All right, I'm with you there. I'm with you. Fifty percent of the way. All right, case closed. <laughs> case closed for appeal. <laughs> All right, thank you for listening. Uh, we. As always, would love any feedback that you have. So rate and review. Give us five stars, please. And uh, Ricky, thanks so much. This was fun, as always. Have a good one, folks. Appreciate it. Drive safe.